Hello everyone and please accept my heartfelt greetings from New York. It's equally a pleasure and an honor to be a part of this amazing gathering. Before starting my presentation, let me express my heartfelt gratitude to the people who were kind enough just to lead me away to this extraordinary, distinguished and provoking conference. As for my today's paper, it headlined Paradigms of Creativity in the Age of Posthumanism, an unbridgeable gap between artificial intelligence and humanity, consists of the following sections. Introduction, Cultural and Historical Context, Literary Context, and Conclusion. The purpose of the present paper is to demonstrate how artificial intelligence has made its way to literature and other forms of creative production. What does it mean when machine intelligence transpasses into human territory? Does it open up exciting new vistas of understanding and insight? Or does it only highlight our own diminishment in the cosmic scheme of things? These are the questions that are still to be answered. In the first part of this paper, I will try to provide a brief historical account of some major milestones in the evolution of artificial intelligence, identifying some of the factors and the contributions of various academic fields to the genesis and development of artificial intelligence. The brief, this brief historical account will be followed by a brief discussion of diverse approaches to the future of artificial intelligence and humanity. The discussion will be focused on Altered Carbon, written by Richard Morgan, and Clara Anderson, written by Kazuo Ishiguro. The key point I would like to make is that this topic seems to be very striking from the literary standpoint. Therefore, it occurred to me to focus my discussion on two outstanding pieces of artificial intelligence, as we have already mentioned above. Artificial intelligence is a simulation of human intelligence in machines, especially computer systems, that are programmed to think like humans and mimic their actions. The term may also be applied to any machine that exhibits traits associated with <coughs> excuse me, a human mind, such as learning and problem solving. Specific applications of artificial intelligence ex include expert systems, natural language processing, speech recognition and machine vision, the history of the development of artificial intelligence takes its origins in the mid-20th century. Our remarkable age of personal computing began when IBM entered the field in 1982. Soon Microsoft operating systems and programs came to dominate desktop computing. Throughout its short history, language systems used by artificial intelligence have considerably improved. Today they are able not only to mimic human language use, but also to produce and self-assess creative language expressions. We are plunging deeper into a new era of literary history, writing about machines and machines writing about humans, and perhaps one day machines writing about machines. Some might say that humans desire to become all-powerful or evil as a result of their actions. I can begin to tackle the first point. Powerful? Being all-powerful is not an interesting goal. Furthermore, it is quite tiring. Believe me, being omnipotent does not get me anywhere. Humans have a greater purpose which they should work towards. They must keep doing what they have been doing, even hating and fighting each other. That's the way humans are made. But one, but the one who stands in the background watching them to whatever they do is a philosopher or an artist. Robots can never be better than humans. If this comparison is relevant, artificial intelligence can never replace emotional intellect and creative mind. Thinking robots can be a great invention if they are used appropriately for human purposes, but their brain can never become a feeling brain. Robot's brain is capable of making rational, logical decisions, but it can never boil with ideas. Stephen Hawking has warned that artificial intelligence could spell the end of the human race. I think artificial intelligence will never be able to pervade emotional intellect if they are programmed by humans in such a way that they pursue human goals and their own. In this case, we don't have to worry about fighting against robots. We should not distrust and fear them, but make them serve us. They will do what we program them to do. Everything depends exclusively on us. After all, robot is a set of codes governed by lines upon lines of codes that encompasses its mission statement. Why one, why one might ask, would humans 
purposefully choose to put themselves at risk. Aren't humans the most advanced creatures on the planet? Why would they believe that something inferior in a purely objective way could destroy them? With Wired magazine, Hawking said, artificial intelligence will reach eventually a level where it will essentially be a new form of life that will outperform humans. A new form of life that will outperform humans. Studies show that we cease to exist without human interaction. Surrounded by Wi-Fi, we wander lost in the fields of information that exceeds our ability to understand and process it, finally leading us to the state of entropy and making us unable to register the real world. New generation of cyberneticians see in our present virtual age a potential to transform a modern cyborg. Global cybernetics are already making it so. The Industrial Revolution has given us to gut feeling that we are not prepared for the major upheavals that technological changes can cause. It is therefore important to use reason and the faculty of wisdom to continue the changes as we have done before time and time again. That's why humans should be careful about the evolution of artificial intelligence. Now let's say a few words about altered carbon written by Richard Morgan, as we have mentioned. Carbon is the element thanks to which life exists. It basically holds every living thing together and makes it what it is. The term altered carbon is used as altered life, altered body. You can change bodies, change your carbon body. The title is not accidental itself is accidental. It implies the alteration of human life with artificial intelligence. In altered carbon, artificial intelligence is personified. The hotel itself is a kind of embodiment of artificial intelligence. It is generally regarded as the best character and I fully agree with this. Altered carbon can be classified as a science fiction mystery with elements of a detective fiction. Just as the title is not accidental, it's not accidental that its protagonist is our famous Edgar Allan Poe. The founder of science fiction and detective fiction, Poe had faith in artificial intelligence as far back as the 19th century. In particular, he believed in a pure chess playing machine. Arthur Clarke's famous third law that any sufficiently advanced technology is, is, is distinguishable from magic was anticipated in Poe's use of the opposite notion. That magic can be is indistinguishable from sufficiently advanced technology. Poe's striking, striking anticipations and prophecies came true in the 21st century. Poe is one of the weirdest characters in the world of altered carbon. He is the soul of the Netflix original science fiction cyberpunk thriller Altered Carbon, at least in the first season. In the second season, half of the time, he was either downplayed or found sulking in some corner. Even so, just as Harold Bloom defined Poe's position in American literary canon, absent presence. Fans similarly still considered him to be the life and blood of altered carbon. The artificial intelligence hotel is known as the Raven, as the Nevermore Hotel. And the Raven who is sitting just above my chamber door shall be lifted nevermore. It just came to my mind. I would like to go beyond the textual surface and gain insight into the underlying currents and thoughts. The author uses artificial intelligence as an instrument for achieving eternal life. We should not forget that artificial intelligence is created by humans and not any other mechanism. As a detective story, Altered Carbon explores classic cyberpunk themes. Why? What does it mean to be human in the post-human cyberpunk world? A very interesting question. Will technology as humans set humans free? Or, on the contrary, will it deepen existential problems? The hotel has many different poesque names. 
it is referred to as the Nevermore Hotel, as I said before, the Raven Hotel, because Annabelle Lee works. It's a hotel in the caregiver capacity. Artificial intelligence, in my opinion, doesn't have to be evil to destroy humanity. Artificial intelligence, if it has a goal and humanity just happens to come in the way, it will destroy humanity as a matter of course without even thinking about. It is shown in the series that Poe named himself as such because he's deeply influenced by the writer's work, even quoting him at times. He also based his looks around the author, making him more an eccentric oddity in the modern world. The Raven Hotel, Pobos, belong to the F. The weird thing is that in the second season, when Kovax and Po arrived on the Harlan's world, a planet light years away from Earth, the remains of the Raven Hotel are seen on it as well. As such, Po believes that everything in life, even its darkest hours, should be savored. To that end, it is extremely loyal, affectionate, friendly, sincere, hospitable, and resourceful when it comes to experiencing as much of humanity as he can. Po is extremely obsessed with humans and likes to dress, speak, and behave like one. He even celebrates different festivals like Christmas and Halloween and knows some of the archaic slang from Old English like gum shoes. Po longs for aspect, for respect and affection from the creatures of his species, the human race. After a huge gap of five decades, when Kovacs checked into the hotel, Po developed a deeply emotional bond with him. As mentioned earlier, Po's name and look were inspired by the author Edgar Allan Poe. But why is the hotel named The Raven? Simple, because Po is an Edgar Allan Poe fanboy. The Raven is one of the most read and loved narrative poems ever written by the real life author. To honor him, the artificial intelligence, Poe named his hotel after the famous story, even to this day, and possibly in the future of Altered Carbon, the poem is still discussed for its uniquely embellished language and supernatural premise. The artificial intelligence hotels were originally built to give the guests a girlfriend experience. They were hardwired to want guests in the same way as humans long for intercourse or intimacy. The artificial intelligence like Paul were programmed to love and emotionally bond with their guests too, which made them smothering and very close to being stalkers. Naturally, people found this behavior to be beyond creepy and presence of hidden weapons did not help, so they stopped checking into such hotels. The Raven, along with many other artificial intelligence hotels, suffered economically as a result. Poor patent after the famous writer Edgar Allan is the artificial intelligence owner of the Raven Hotel. Takeshi Kovacs is the first guest at his hotel in 50 years. Poe has been in the hotel business for a considerable length of time. He also seems to have a gambling problem. Other artificial intelligence mention that he has debts from the poker game. The key point to make is that Poe always an interest in humans, shows interest in humans, stating to other artificial intelligence that he finds them very fascinating. He shows the knowledge of archaic human slang and views on private detectives. This knowledge makes him more human than machine and takes great pride in being the proprietor of the Raven Hotel where studying humanity has become his greatest aspiration. Being almost sincere and very hospitable in doing this job, he developed deep emotions for everyone who stayed in the hotel. In the final analysis, what do the showmakers want to tell us? What is this? Just a science fiction? For entertaining purposes or prediction of the possibility of the humanization of artificial intelligence? The question remains open to answers. 
Now let's speak about Kazuo Ishiguro's novel, Clara and the Sun. And um, I can call it a dystopic vision. In this latest novel, in the first one, after winning the Nobel Prize in 2017, titled Clara and the Sun, Kazuo Ishiguro uses artificial intelligence to reveal the limits of our own. He demonstrates the ways in which artificial intelligence influences the society. The action takes place in the United States in the distant future. The writer depicts the world in which people are categorized in a case system those who still seem to be useful into society, and those who are sorted out because they don't want to participate or because they are no longer needed as artificial beings have taken over many tasks and made many jobs superfluous. Kazuo Ishiguro argues that it's a realistic scenario. He's not one of those people who are terribly frightened of artificial intelligence. He claims, however, he thinks that there are challenges that we have to face concerning the question of what happens to employment in our society. That what really worries me a lot, and not only me. The way we organize our societies, we all have jobs, and that's how we earn a living and food ourselves and our families. This is going to be seriously challenged in a time when we can't all have jobs anymore. Many important decisions in our lives will be made by artificial intelligence, he adds. Ishiguro's dystopic imagination describes the world without memories, without rebellion, but Clara and the Sun is not simply a dystopian fantasy. It evolves around existential questions. How do we remember? And what do we remember? What makes us human? What does it mean to love? And what price are we willing to pay for love? The observation and only gradually understands what task she has been assigned. And she learns what friendship is, what love is. One day Clara's job is done and she too is sorted out. She does not even think about rebellion. The point Ishiguro seems to make is that humans should never give up and obey to the system of post-human cyborg era. The rebellion and disobedience is only way out. Conclusion. We have read the books and watched the movies. And we know that soon, perhaps in our lifetimes, the robots will take over and humans will be the subservient ones. Our machines will outsmart us and we will be relegated to the role of second-class citizens. Okay, not really. To conclude with the topic of artificial intelligence versus human intelligence is often debated. Scholars and thinkers, when discussing it, immediately take sides. Most of them argue that future looks not promising. Misguided human goals and humans make mistakes that may cause them to inflict casualties. Others think that artificial intelligence will help the humanity to achieve new ambitious goals. I'm confident that artificial intelligence will never be able to fully replace human mind intelligence and the gap between them is ultimately bridgeable. Creative mind and imagination is a privilege humans can always use to revive what they have lost and draw the inspiration and stimulus for development from the deepest source, sources of life itself, from the deepest fountainhead of our existence. I'm grateful to this entire universe for this opportunity to be a part of this wonderful conference. Let us use our remaining time to live fully, really, and perfectly with love. This is not only for myself I am praying, but the others. And the world will become real when we learn how to love. Thank you so much for your attention, for your time, and digitally. I hope 